What's up, you guys? Hello, everybody. Well, if you guys haven't already heard, the Rams are for sure doomed. 2020 is already doomed. The Rams have no chance. Well, the Rams do have a chance. The Rams have a chance to save a lot of money and restructure the team in a way that they can get a basically a pretty decent roster moving on to the 2020 season so but this will have to this might actually hurt some of your guys' feelings i know some of us are very attached to certain players and you know especially me being that i i really like one certain mvp caliber player in Corey littleton but let's say we do not re-sign dante fowler we don't sign sign andrew Whitworth. we don't re-sign greg zerline um a lot of the players that we love, Michael Brockers, Dante Fowler, Corey Littleton, Clay Matthews, we, we might have to release Clay Matthews, but that leaves us with enough money to, in free agency, get a bunch of high ceiling, but you know maybe underachieving players under the radar and put them on the team. So on the defensive line, Michael Brockers is probably the biggest cap casualty because we'll end up saving some money letting him go. And he's already uh, up there. I think he's about 29, 30 years old. I don't think the Rams, unless he's able to take a team-friendly deal, will end up like likely letting him go. Um, but that also leaves us with great games. Maybe playing at the defensive end slash nose tackle position. Also, Sebastian Joseph Day. So we put two big bodies up there with Aaron Donald. And we have two very young, but I think flexible type of players and a Bono Karanko on one side of the edge and then and then um Samson Ibukam on the other side with Kenny Young and Micah Kaiser two decent under the radar linebackers and then we have Troy Hill, Jalen Ramsey, studs in the back when it comes to Taylor Rapp and John Johnson. So that t- team on paper doesn't look bad, right? We got new coaching staff and we'll have about 25 to $30 million to play with. Maybe a little bit more depending on what, what the Rams end up doing. Um, but that would have to be if we move on from one generation and go to the next. So something to think about. Also the Rams offensively, they're looking to trade Todd Gurley. I don't, I'm not sure what you would get in compensation for maybe a team that has a lot of money like the Dolphins Um, I heard the Buccaneers are looking maybe to get a guy like Todd Gurley like if Todd Gurley were to be traded they would in in my opinion if they were to take the whole contract and give us like a decent ish take like a fifth a fourth and just call it even I think that would be a a a good move for the Rams but then then yet again that all this offensive struggle crap would be finished if the Rams fix up that offensive line so maybe we wait a year and keep Todd Gurley but we go and get two stud offensive linemen in the draft and fix that that issue plus you have Bobby Evans and Rob Havenstein David Edwards those three tackles look promising plus Joseph Nobu and then you still have Brian Allen at center Austin Blythe will likely be gone but then you have Corbett at the left guard position so the Rams still can they have move, you know, they, there are moves they can make, but it might not be the the best moves for us because we're so, you know, attached to players that have done a lot for the Rams and have played out very very well. But we, we knowing knowing how free agency goes, some of these players will likely get paid a lot more money elsewhere. So why not just t- you know you know take off the bandaid, let it hurt a little bit, but in the end. You know the wounds will heal and the team will probably be better off roster wise um, being that the defense wasn't elite the good thing about the Rams defense under Wade Phillips was the fact that we got a lot of sacks and that's something the pressure pressure the quarterback get a lot of sacks get a bunch of turnovers but we gave up a lot on the run and when you give up a lot on the run it's hard to win games sometimes especially against really good teams that can run and pass so the rams might want to restructure their defense to being a defense that really puts an emphasis at you know um stopping the run basic defense you know try to try to get those third down conversions rather than 
bend but not break and try to get after the quarterback, if that makes sense. So that's that's something I've been thinking about. I'm not sure with his new defensive coordinator what his philosophy is. Maybe with the uh, you know new young bucks that are coming in when it comes to Kevin O'Connell and, and uh, I forgot the defense, uh, Brandon Staley. Stanley or Staley, they, those guys will probably have a different philosophy to what we're used to, especially Kevin O'Connell who has a big emphasis on the run, you know, West Coast um, zone schemes, but running the ball effectively. Then you have passing game coordinator slash head coach Sean McVay, and then you get your your basic but stop the run, you know, ground and pound type, type of defense. The defense that, that is predicated on stopping the run first and then the pass second rather than Wade Phillips, I think is more of a, you know, pass first and run second. So we'll see what happens, but the, it, the hope is not all lost, you guys. It, this is just the beginning of a, of a new era for the Rams. The 2020, I think prior to 2020 was just to get people very, you know, put the Rams on the map. And then now it's time for the Rams to take over. So let me know what you guys think about that. That's something I've been thinking about and I've been wondering is, are the Rams kind of like moving forward in the sense of their philosophy? And then also, should we move forward from the, the old era, which was a great era, but those players are really, really expensive to the new era where we try to just get guys that can fit in the system, get after the quarterback, but number one is stop the run. So let me know what you guys think. Until next time, you guys, go Rams.